Hello, and welcome to Medell Spotlight. In these short and informative webinars, we feature leading hearing healthcare professionals from across the country to discuss available treatment options and provide insights into the field of hearing implants and intact skin solutions for all Medell product lines. In this particular series, we are diving into everything Otoplan, from pre-op electrode selection to post-op mapping of the frequency to electrode location. My name is Kevin Still, and I am a surgical account manager with MedL. Today, we'll be speaking with Dr. Peter Volsky, Assistant Professor of Otology, Neurootology, and Skull Based Surgery at Eastern Virginia Medical School about MedL's cochlear implant surgical planning software, Otoplan. Dr. Volsky was one of the early adopters of Otoplan, utilizing the software to help with selecting the appropriate electrode for his MedL patients. Thanks for joining me, Dr. Volsky. Thanks for the invitation, Kevin. So uh, tell me, when we first talked about Otoplan, when you first learned about it, how did you think it might help your cochlear implant patients? Frankly, I thought the, the concept of Otoplan was exciting because it took the guesswork out of choosing uh, electrode lengths for specific patients. You know, the concept of both deep or shallow insertion angles is not not new, but this you know software now allows a surgeon to uh, uh, provide more individualized implantation based on both the cochlear size as well as the you know the residual hearing. So yeah, tell me more about that. Uh, how do you use the data from Otoplan to help you choose the electrode? I mean, the way I would conceptualize it is one of two ways. One, if you are seeking to uh, implant the entire cochlea, then you can know ahead of time what electrode you need to put in. Uh, and the second is in EAS cases, since you can determine the cochlear frequency map, you know, match that with the cochlear duct length using the software, uh, no, no person would, would receive too short a wire if you do the, the guesswork, uh, the, the work up front. Okay, so that help, report helps you make decisions based on patients' needs, uh, given their different, their different needs and different backgrounds. Well, we get a lot of questions from surgeons about these Otoplan reports. What factors do you consider when you're looking at that choice of electrode length? Is it just that cochlear duct length? It's not the length by itself, but uh, in, in the case, you know, the example case that I can give you was my second Otoplan patient. He, uh, he was a, a gentleman in his mid-40s with familial hearing loss who had uh, you know, uh, deteriorating hearing over the last couple of decades and uh, struggling with his hearing aids you know, so that his speech scores were now in the single digits. And so he, he was an established cochlear implant candidate, but um, due to his audiovisual work, he was very interested in, in hearing preservation of what he had. He had mild to moderate tone thresholds below 500 Hertz. Uh, what I proposed to him is that we simply use Otoplan to place an electrode uh, to not disturb those cochlear regions. And the Otoplan software will allow the a surgeon to determine the length of the electrode. Now, typically I would implant a Flex 28 or in, a, in an EAS case, default to a 24. In this particular case, the uh, residual hearing mapped to the length uh, matching a Flex 26 electrode. So that was the selected electrode and the, the results were very good. That's great news. When you brought up the idea of using Otoplan with this patient, what kinds of questions did he have for you? I don't remember specifically if he had uh, questions about the software. I think from the surgeon's standpoint, this is, you know, it's a little bit new to be, to say that there's a change in paradigm, but it certainly is a useful tool to be able to individualize your choice of electrode for a patient. And if we're looking at an audiogram and, and talking about how, you know, there's just a part of your hearing that is still healthy and you want to uh, implant the, the parts of the, the inner ear that don't detect any vibratory sound, then we can select an electrode that will fit that, that area. Uh, conversely, you know, for individuals who don't have a steeply sloping hearing configuration, you can use the, the, uh, the software to determine the, the full length of the cochlea. Uh, and that's 
you know, it's another useful application. So for the patient we were talking about earlier, we selected a shorter electrode, uh, a different size than you might usually select. What were the outcomes? How were the results? He was very happy from a surgical standpoint. He had a really uneventful recovery. I did uh, make performance measures. So preoperatively, uh, we tested his uh, CNC words at 4%. Uh, Postoperatively, just uh, three months later, it was at 82%. Uh, and in quiet sentences, preoperatively, he scored 9%. And postoperatively, in quiet, 94%. So we tested him in noise, and he got 95%. So he's very pleased with, with it and went back to his life. And this is just you know early, early uh, postoperative measures. Since we've worked with this patient, we've worked with a few other patients looking at OtoPlan analyses. And when patients come and you're gonna to talk to them about OtoPlan, how do you present this idea to them in the very first introduction of this idea? What do you say to them? I, I think uh, different patients have different concepts of what they want in the cochlear implant, but if they're uh, interested in, in talking about it or in particular, are interested in in kind of a different way of doing things other than what we already you know consider standard you know for for dedicated surgeons to be really uh, concerned with uh, using delicate technique and have a safe anesthetic and all, all the all of the standard things if, if a patient is interested in in a new way to uh, try to achieve the same desired outcome then uh, certainly we'll we'll offer that to them and uh, in particular, if they have that steeply sloping audiometric configuration that we're uh, making a, a serious effort to preserve for EAS purposes. We've been talking mainly about using OtoPlan for analyzing preoperatively. And since we've worked through the previous patient, anatomy-based fitting has been released as an option based on OtoPlan analyses. And you've ordered a couple of postoperative CT scans how did you present this need for additional imaging to those patients? For postoperative CT scans, it's uh, rather straightforward. We simply have ordered the scans from uh, the recovery room. And so far at the hospital is able to get the scan done and the patient is discharged home as they normally would. It doesn't really uh, require any uh, additional you know, legwork on the part of the, the office or, or the patient uh, actually we were able to do it pretty seamlessly. Well, we've worked through a few patients and we'll see some more. What are your thoughts on how OtoPlan and this anatomy-based fitting can be used at your center as we move forward? I, I think the simplest way that we can use OtoPlan uh, is for electrode choice. Uh, and that helps helps a surgeon to achieve surgical goals. The the, the second method, which is really very new for us and unable to, to say yet uh, how it's impacting the, the uh, rehabilitation process would be the anatomy-based fitting. So uh, having both of those tools in the toolbox, I think is very helpful, especially if your uh, goal is to uh, individualize care and also to uh, hopefully reduce the the learning time on the rehab side, hopefully shorten the, uh, the time to achieving, achieving a good speech uh, understanding. I'm really happy that we were able to get excellent outcomes with the patient we used OtoPlan for preoperative analysis and electrode choice. And I'm looking forward to working with you more to see how new data can show how patients might be able to do better with anatomy-based fitting. And I really like your idea of this idea of individualization of the whole process. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes with you. Likewise, thanks, Kevin. I'm also looking forward to see how our patients do with the uh, anatomy-based fitting and hopefully hopefully more cases uh, with the OtoPlan electrode selection will, uh, will also do very well. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot for your time today, Dr. Volsky. Thank you.